Warning. This video doesn't show every way of obtaining an item, just the ones that are reliable and done easily. Don't expect to get items very very fast, everything in this game takes some time. Also thanks to Sensei for the help with the list lol. Anyways, let's get to the main topic of the video. In this segment I want to discuss some ways of doing certain things faster to help you with obtaining most of the items. This includes, fast mythic meteors, fast mondos, fast wild windy bee, fast bugs, macroing fields, fast snail, fast crab and also fast vicious bees. If you don't care about any of these, skip to the time you see on the screen to get to the items. Also, this video will most likely become a bit outdated when the buoy and bee update comes out, but I will make sure to release another video on the new items as well as the changes made for the already existing items. Do not ask others for meteors, mostly everyone will ignore you, because you are annoying. Instead, join discord servers that have a meteor pin and get in servers when people ping for it. I do two meteors daily in crafters server. One thing to keep in mind is that meteor servers fill up in 10 seconds, so you must be super fast if you want to get in. I made a video explaining Mondo hopping, link in the description. Donate 1 star jelly, it's cheap and it has around 60% chance of spawning windy, try killing it with other people to reach bigger levels and better rewards, using demon mask and having good bees is a must if you want good rewards. The most efficient and easy way to kill a lot of bugs is bug running. Bug running is a type of macro that goes in every field where mobs spawn, kills the mobs, and collects the loot. There is also bug run macros that check wealth clock regularly. Bug running isn't easy to set up. You need gummy boots or coconut clogs, close to zero bees that make haste tokens, and a stable internet connection. If you need more help with macroing, give me a friend request on Discord and tell me what you need help with. I also have a video on macroing, link in the description. You can find bug run macros, as well as other macros used in Bee Swarm and Crafters server, link in the description. You will need decent gear and bees, as well as cub buddy and windy bee for token collection. I have a video made on macroing, where I discuss the whole process. I recommend an attack mutated vicious bee for more damage, a few bees that make focus, demon mask, and 3 to 4 music bees for melody. Also cub buddy and windy bee can help with token collection while you afk. Have bees that are at least level 10 and level 12 vicious to kill the crab fast. Demon mask can also help do more damage as well as the melody ability from music bee. Every night there is a 1 in 3 chance that a vicious bee will spawn, and a super rare chance during the day. Make sure you check clover, spider, rose, cactus, mountain top and pepper field for spikes every time night comes. You can also join discord servers where people ping when they find a vicious bee, for example fast stingers, which I will link in the description. Ok, now we can start talking about the items. The first item on the list is the ticket. There are a lot of ways to get tickets since it's a main source of currency used to buy all sort of stuff. By far, the most efficient and easy way is the wealth clock. The wealth clock generates one ticket if you play constantly for one hour, then two if you play another hour, and so on until it hits the maximum five tickets per hour. This means you can get 5 tickets per hour or 120 tickets in 24 hours from not doing anything. All you need to start doing this is the auto clicker, which I will link in the description, and a stable internet connection. To start you just have to put your mouse on this box and start it. Having stable internet is helpful because disconnection can ruin a whole session of AFKing. Moving on, the next easy way to gain tickets is to beat snail. 50 tickets are guaranteed from it, and it can go up until 250, but that is very rare. Killing mobs can also give a noticeable amount of tickets, 
Killing mobs goes hand in hand with wealth clock through bug running. Mobs like werewolf, scorpions, mantises and the spider can drop tickets, as well as tunnel bear and king beetle. Use baby love for increased luck. Meteors also drop considerable amounts of tickets. Wild Windy Bee drops a ton of tickets before you reach the daily loot limit, which prevents you from getting tickets from Windy Bee. This limit is reached if you kill about 2 Windy Bees depending on how many levels you get through. The ticket shop found at Mountain Top can be quite useful. I suggest only buying tickets from there only if it's very cheap for you. Now let's talk about gumdrops. The fastest way to get them is by buying them with tickets from the gumdrop shop, located next to the spider field. Critical has realized a bit too late that crafting gumdrops in the blender isn't actually that wasteful if you make a lot in macroing. If you make 2000 fruits per night, that 1000 gumdrops in 3 nights and you don't even use any tickets. Another way to get them is by crafting in the blender. I find this wasteful. But if you grind or macro in fields to get the materials, you can easily get many by crafting. I made a video on macroing, check the description for the link. If you don't have tickets or fruits to craft them, a bad alternative is stick bug. The nymphs commonly drop gumdrop tokens, but not a lot of them. The method everyone knows is gummy sprouts. If you have enough haste you can easily get over 50 gumdrops from a single one. Keep in mind gummy sprouts are kinda rare. There are plenty of ways to get coconuts, but the fastest and easiest way to get them is to just kill crab. Stingers can be quite irritating to grind, so here are some tips. The most common way to get them is to kill rogue vicious bees. Night memory match and extreme memory match have chance of giving 5 stingers, so be sure to do them regularly. Also, make sure to check out the segment where I talk about killing vicious bees faster. Microconverters are used in boosts all the time. Coconut crab gives a ton of them if you kill it fast. Another way that is even more efficient is mondo hopping, which basically means killing multiple mondos in one hour. I made a video on mondo hopping, so make sure you check it out if you need any help. I will link it in the description as well. The Cub Buddy can also drop 1 or 5 microconverters at once, but it's pretty rare. If you macro for long periods of time, Cub Buddy may spawn these multiple times. Make sure to do the memory matches, because all of them can drop micros. The Werewolf has a small chance of dropping 1 and the Tunnel Bear can drop 1, 5 or even 10, but it isn't guaranteed. If you did all of this and still need micros, Rhino Beetles have a small chance of dropping one micro converter, so make sure to kill all of them, preferably with baby love. Field dices are also used in boosting. Keep in mind that new and improved dices will be added very soon so this guide may or may not become outdated. Check the wiki. Anyways, the main source of dices is the Mondo Chick. Check the Mondo Hopping video in the description to learn how to beat multiple Mondos per hour. The normal memory match can drop 1, the mega memory match can drop 2, and the night 1 can drop 3. The Windy Bee can also drop dices at higher levels. For example, I once beat it with prestigious until level 18 and got 5 dices. Ladybugs can also drop 1 dice, but it's a pretty low chance. If you want to get dices from them make sure you use baby love to increase the chances. The spider has a good chance to drop dices, so make sure you beat him frequently. Lastly, meteors have a decent chance to give dices. Jelly bins are super important in boosts, and you need a lot of them. The easiest way to get them is from doing ant challenges. You have around 1 in 5 chance to get jelly bins from the ant challenge rewards. Keep in mind the more score you have, the more bins you get. If you ran out of ant passes, you can also do the memory matches to get some bonus jelly beans. The normal one has a good chance to give 1, the mega one can also give 1, and extreme can give 3. If you did all this and still need beans, you can rely on Cub Buddy. He rarely drops 1 or 5 jelly bins, but if you macro you should be able to make a considerable amount each night. 
For example I make about 3 to 7 and 8 hours depending on luck. The red extract is needed for a lot of recipes as well as crafting gear. The easiest way to get them is by grinding in a red field for strawberries and crafting them in the blender. It will take time, but patience is key. If grinding isn't for the cool second graders just like you, you can try macroing in fields for strawberries, but this requires Cub Buddy and Wendy B so you can easily pick up the strawberry tokens. I know that most of you don't have Wendy B and Cub Buddy. All you can do is try other methods, try to destroy any sprout that is rare, because all sprouts besides the normal, gummy and moon one can give a red extract token if in a red or mixed field, scorpions and ladybugs have a small chance of dropping a red extract, so make sure you kill them regularly. Also the king beetle has a big chance of dropping red extract. In packs of 1, 3, 5 or even 10. I recommend killing it with baby love to increase your chances. Lastly, Gifted Riley B gives one red extract if you complete a mission. Remember that these quests get harder and harder as you complete more missions. The blue extract is basically the same as the red extract, but it's... Well. Blue. Make sure to see the part where I talk about red extracts because I'm not repeating that same nonsense again. Anyways. I will still talk about the methods because I'm the nicest YouTuber to ever exist. You can grind blueberries in a blue field and make them in the blender. You can macro in a blue field, but this requires Cub Buddy and Windy Bee. These sprouts can give blue extract if they are in a blue or mixed field. Mantises and rhino beetles have a small chance of dropping a blue extract. You can complete gifted Bako Bee's quests if you need blue extracts because Bucko gives one extract for completing a mission. Glitter can feel hard to gather. One of the most common ways to get them is by crafting in the blender, but that requires magic bins and moon charms, which aren't common either. The memory matches can all give glitter. The normal one gives one. Mega can give one or even five, which is very rare. The night memory match has a very high chance of giving one and extreme can give one or five. The werewolf, mantis and scorpion all have a low chance of dropping one glitter. Make sure to use baby love when killing these to increase the chances. The snail can drop one to ten glitters, but it's not guaranteed. The wild windy bee has a mediocre chance to drop glitter. Another boss that drops glitter is the coconut crab. Keep in mind that the faster you beat him, the more glitter he can give you. I get around 2 to 4 glitter at a 1 minute and 20 second kill. All sprouts have a chance of dropping glitter, which of course scales with rarity, so make sure you destroy any sprout you see. Meteors also have a good chance to drop glitter, so make sure you participate in any meteor showers that get summoned. We all can agree glue is expensive and it's very hard to obtain sometimes. What you can do is get gum drops and jellies and craft them. The glue dispenser in Gummy Bear's lair gives glues once every 22 hours. Keep in mind you get more glue the better your goo badge is, the maximum being 5 glues. Some mobs can drop a lot of glue, like the spider, which can drop 1, and the werewolf, which has a slightly better chance than the spider to drop 1, 5 or even 10 glues at once. Another mob that drops glue frequently is the king beetle. Kill it with baby love to increase the chances. Sometimes even the crab can drop glue. It really depends on the time it takes you to kill it, but on average it gives me about 2 to 4 glues if I beat it in 1 minute and 20 seconds. The stump snail is guaranteed to drop 10 glues, and it can go up to 100 glues, which I actually got once. Besides gumdrop tokens, Gummy sprouts can also drop glue tokens. From what I've seen, it's around 3 glue tokens per gummy sprout, and it's very much possible to get them all if you are fast enough. The mega memory match and the night memory match can give one glue, so make sure to do your memory matches. There are a lot of ways you can gather enzymes. The most efficient is grinding or macroing pineapples in pineapple field and using those to craft enzymes in the blender. There are a bunch of mobs that can drop enzymes. The werewolf can drop one, and I honestly haven't seen it drop one in a very long time so it is very rare. 
the spider has a greater chance of giving enzymes in packs of 1, 3, 5, 10 or even 25 if you have crazy luck. The scorpion also has a low chance of dropping enzymes, so make sure you kill all of these mobs, with baby love preferably. If you are running low on enzymes, some bosses can drop big quantities of enzymes, for example, the king beetle has a pretty common chance to drop 1 or 5 enzymes, tunnel bear drops enzymes almost every time, and in packs of 1, 3, 5 or 10, and even stick bug can drop enzymes, but you need to have a good team to be able to make a considerable amounts of them. The snail has a pretty common chance to drop enzymes, ranging from 1 to 10 enzymes. Make sure to do your memory matches since all memory matches have a chance to drop enzymes. Lastly, depending on rarity, sprouts can give enzymes if you find them in pineapple field or mixed fields like pumpkin and cactus. Please, whatever you do, don't craft tropical drinks in the blender, it's a huge waste of resources. Instead, focus on getting better gear and bees until you can kill coconut crab for tropical drinks, which is easily the best and easiest way to get tropical drinks. If you can't beat coconut crab, you can do memory matches. The mega memory match has a super rare chance of giving one tropical drink, and extreme can also give one, but the chance is slightly greater. Wild Windy Bee can also drop tropical drink tokens, but it's kind of rare, and overall a bad source of tropical drinks. So basically, all I can tell you is to get good bees and gear to kill crab, because it's basically the only good source of tropical drinks in the game. Oil is needed in crafting a lot. The main source of oils comes from grinding or macroing in sunflower field, which for whatever reason drops a lot of sunflower seeds, and crafting them in the blender. The wild windy bee can drop oil tokens. It's not common but not very rare either. Keep in mind the more levels of windy bee you beat, the more oils you can get. All of the memory matches can give oil. The normal, mega and night memory match can all give one, and extreme can give three. A handful of mobs can drop oil tokens, like the werewolf, which can drop 1, and the mantis which can drop 1, 5 or even 10 oils, but it's kind of rare. Some bosses also drop oil. The king beetle has a mediocre chance to drop 1, the tunnel bear can drop 1, 3, 5 or even 10 oils if you are lucky. The stump snail can drop 1 to 10 oils, but it's not guaranteed, as well as the coconut crab, which can drop multiple oils, depending on the time it takes you to kill it. For example I get around 4 oils on a 1 minute and 20 second kill. Rare, Epic, Legendary and Supreme Sprouts can all drop oil tokens if you are in sunflower field or mixed fields. Moving on to purple potions. Sadly, these are mostly only obtained by crafting them in the blender. Both Tunnel Bear and King Beetle have a low chance to drop one purple potion. Mythic Meteors can also give one purple potion but it's rare. Sorry if I disappointed you, but crafting is literally the only reliable way to get these. Super smoothies are once again mostly only obtained by crafting. Tunnel Bear has a super rare chance to drop one, as well as meteors. As of 28th of November, before the buoy and bee update, marshmallow bees are currently unobtainable. Please keep in mind these might become obtainable again, and if they do, I will make sure to announce in the pinned comment. Only 4 codes can give Marshmallow Bees, which are Mondo Outage, Marshmallow, Teespring and Plush Friday. Magic Bins are kinda rare to come by, so here are all of the good methods you can use to get them. I wouldn't recommend using the sprout bin shop found next to stump field since the bins there are so expensive. The coconut crab can give a few magic beans, depending on the time it takes you to kill it. For example I usually get 1 to 3 magic bins on a 1 minute and 20 second kill. All sprouts besides moon and gummy can give magic bins. The rarer the sprout is, the bigger the chance to get magic bins gets. Ladybug and Beetle have a very small chance to drop one magic bin and the spider has a good chance to drop one. 
I recommend using baby love to kill the spider. The normal memory match has a low chance to drop one magic bean. The night memory match can also drop one but the chance is way bigger, and mega can drop one or five, but the chance is low. Some bosses also drop magic bins. The wild windy bee has a low chance to drop one, king beetle has a decent chance to drop magic bins ranging from one to ten, and tunnel bear has a lower chance to drop one, three, five or even ten. The mondo chick has a small chance to give one bin, as well as the snail which can drop magic bins ranging from 1 to 25 bins, which is very rare. Festive bins can only be obtained from a festive present and festive mark, with the chances being super extra low. Cloud vials are needed in boosts and in taming windy bee. The best way to get them is by defeating wild windy bees, which commonly drops vials. Another way is by doing extreme memory match, which has a low chance of giving one vial. Next on the list is the night bell, which is also very very hard to obtain. The quote unquote easiest way to get it is from night memory match, which has a very rare chance of dropping one. Some mobs also have insanely low chances to drop a night bell, for example the werewolf, the aphids, king beetle, wild windy bee, Fireflies, Coconut Crab in the Tunnel Bear. I don't know why any of you would need the box so frogs, but it's currently only obtainable by completing the following quests. Bubble Trouble for 1 box and boss battles for 3 boxes, which are both black bear quests, and the 111th and 333rd brown bear quest. You can get ant passes from the ant pass dispensers. Please don't use the one with 10 tickets because it's just a waste. The other way to get them is by killing Tunnel Bear, which commonly drops one and pass. You only get the translators from doing the limits of language, B Sprinto, and epistemological endeavor quests from Science Bear. To get the spirit petals you need to complete the 10th. 20th and 30th spirit bear quests. I also made a video giving some tips on spirit bear quests to help you get faster through them. There are tons of ways you can get treats, but the problem is most of them give meaningless amounts to be even worth mentioning. Two words, treat dispenser. The atomic treat is a very rare item. You can get a guaranteed one from the digital B event by completing all three stages. The other way to get them is from Mythic Meteors, but the chance is very very low. The easiest way to get star treats is to just buy them with tickets. Yes, I know 1000 tickets is a lot. But there aren't any other options. Both Mondo Chick and Coconut Crab have a super small chance to drop a star treat. If you complete Mother Bears, Panda bears and on its questline you get one star treat from each. There are other ways to get them, like extreme memory match or mythic meteors, but the chances are so low they aren't even worth discussing. Sunflower seeds can be obtained by grinding, macroing or planting sprouts in sunflower field. On it has buffed the drop rate of all fruits a while ago, so it should be pretty easy to get them. All you need is patience. The werewolf commonly drops seeds, so make sure you kill it, as well as the windy bee, which drops a lot of them. Strawberries can be obtained by grinding, macroing, or destroying sprouts in a red field. Mobs like ladybugs and scorpions have a high chance to drop them. You can get pineapples by grinding, macroing or planting sprouts in pineapple field. Mobs like the spider can drop a ton of them, as well as the mantis. You can get blueberries by macroing, grinding, or planting sprouts in a blue field. The rhino beetle and mantis can drop them. Bitter berries are used to mutate your bees. The best source is the mondo chick, which drops around 15 to 25, depending on the time it takes you to kill it. 
Besides the Mondo chick, meteors also drop bitter berries, not as many as Mondo, but it's still a considerable amount. The coconut crab also drops quite a few, I get around 25 with a 1 minute and 30 second kill. Neon berries are very important in boosting, because you use them to make purple potions and super smoothies. By far, the easiest way to get them is from mythic meteors. They aren't very common, but not very rare either. The mondo chick and stump snail can also drop neon berries. It's pretty rare though. Neon berries can appear from leaves in some fields as well. If you macro in pineapple, blue flower or pine tree field, you should make quite a few per night. I make around 5 per night depending on my luck. Moon charms aren't easy to come by. The best way to get them is by popping moon sprouts during the night. One moon sprout gives about 25 moon charm tokens. Another efficient way to get moon charms is by doing the night memory match, which drops moon charms every time. In packs of 25, mythic meteors also give good amounts of moon charms. Fireflies pretty much guarantee moon charms every night. If you are fast enough, you can get 10 or more moon charms per night. I don't know why I'm putting the basic egg on the list. Just use the basic egg dispenser law. Ironically enough, silver eggs are harder to obtain than golden eggs. King Beetle and Mandus both have a small chance to drop one silver egg. An easier way to get them is by destroying rare sprouts. They have a small chance to drop one silver egg. Clover Field can give eggs from leaves, including silver eggs, however the chances are painfully low. The easiest way to get golden eggs is by purchasing them with 50 tickets from the ticket tent. Keep in mind there is one free golden egg inside the werewolf cave. You will need a lot of haste to outrun the cave monsters though. If you capture Commando Chick 10 times or complete 50 brown bear quests, you are rewarded one golden egg. Extreme Memory Match has a super low chance to give a golden egg. Epic Sprouts have a small chance to drop one golden egg. As I previously mentioned, grinding in Clover Field can give you eggs, including golden eggs. Diamond eggs should only be used to craft the diamond mask, and after that as donation for wins and serious boosts. There are a ton of ways to get these, but all are very rare. You should also check the wiki because I'm not mentioning all of the methods of getting these. There is one diamond egg in front of Shadow Bear. Black Bear and Panda Bear both reward one diamond egg in their quest lines. Legendary Sprout has a mediocre chance to give one and Supreme Sprout guarantees one every time. A ton of mobs can drop it, I won't start naming all of them but I will edit them on the screen. Mythic Meteors and Extreme Memory Match have a super small chance to drop one. Lastly, Leaves from the Clover Field have a super duper small chance of giving you a diamond egg. Mythic eggs are mostly gotten from Mondo Chick, which has about 1 to 2% chance of dropping one depending on the time it took you to kill it. Black Bear rewards you with a Mythic egg if you complete his questline and Brown Bear gives one for 100, 200 and 400 quests completed. Extreme Memory Match and Mythic Meteors both have a painfully low chance of dropping a Mythic egg. You are guaranteed one Mythic egg if you capture Commando Chick 50 times. Stump Snail and apparently Coconut Crab can give mythic eggs. The chances are, of course, very low. I won't be talking about the star variants of the eggs since they require you to do something specific to get them. Check the wiki if you still want to learn about obtaining these. The same thing that applies to treats applies to royal jellies as well. There are a lot of ways to get them but all give very low amounts compared to just buying them from the Royal Jelly Shop. If you really want to know the ways of getting Royal Jellies, look on the wiki. The last item on the list is the Star Jelly. The easiest way to get them is by killing the Coconut Crab. The faster you kill it, the more Star Jellies you get. For example, I get around 1 to 3 with a 1 minute and 20 second defeat. 
The Mega and Night Memory matches can give one star jelly in the extreme. One has a great chance to give one, and a rare chance to give three. Wild Windy B rarely drops one star jelly, and it does so at higher levels. All sprouts from rare to supreme have a chance of dropping star jelly tokens. If you get 10 million score in Stick Bugs Challenge, you are guaranteed one star jelly. The more score you get, the more star jellies you are rewarded. I don't recommend using the blender to get star jellies since it's too expensive. The Mondo Chick, King Beetle, Tunnel Bear and Werewolf all have a small chance to drop a star jelly.